Hey, Chris Perry from Equity Guru here with today's three minute hit. This one, not about a specific company, but about a kind of company. Uh, and that is those without a market. Uh, what, I mean, what I mean by that, I mean companies that sometimes come to the market with the founders and deal guys having invested money before they've gone public. They own all the stock, stock goes public, and there's no great amount of stock trading because they're not in a hurry to sell, right? I start a company, I've gone public, I think this thing's going to the moon, I just gotta put some work in, stock is at 10 cents, no one's buying it because frankly, I'm not selling it at nine or eight or seven to encourage them to get in. If I'm selling anything, I'm selling at 21. Uh, so people tend to not get in, that the stock trades by appointment, it, it, it's illiquid. Uh, you might get some people buying a, a cross, but you just generally don't get people that say, I'm going to go in and take this thing from 10 cents to 21 cents in one trade. It's, it just, it doesn't make sense unless you think there are others that are doing the same thing. So uh, we represent a company called Beacon Wizardry and Magic. These guys, B-E-A-C-N uh, is the name. B-E-C-N is the ticker. They make a microphone specifically for the streamer audience. We love the microphone. This is it right here. Um, it, it does all sorts of things that a traditional mic doesn't and I think steps up the, 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 the content creation game significantly for, especially for a company like ours, that we've had challenges with background noise being in downtown Vancouver. Anyway, nobody buys the stock. Why is that? Well, you can sell it for 21 cents. You can buy it for 29 and a half. There's nothing in the middle because the vast majority of people that own the stock are in the company, right? And they're not in a hurry to sell because they believe in it, it's going to the moon. If you want to buy it, you're going to buy it at a premium. The amount of money it will take to wriggle some out of the hands of the guys that know this company best. Now, that doesn't stop me. I've still bought some because I believe that once they start filling that, that space, this thing is going to be very much springy in the upward direction. So paying 29 cents, even though I can't sell it for more than 21, it works for me. I'm a long-term investor. As a trader, it wouldn't work at all. But as a long-term investor, 29 cents, 32 cents, I don't give a rat's ass. I think it's going to 60. So I'm in. But in order to get to 60, they've got to close that gap. They've got to get more of a retail shareholder base than currently exists. Now, a lot of people will look at that stock and say, I'm not buying in because it's so thinly traded. I go the other way. I go and say, I'm buying in because I have no plans to get out in the short term. And I think that this is as good as I'm going to get price-wise. I might be able to get it lower, but what's really the point? I'm going to be in this thing for the next two years, so let's take my position. Now, if two or three more people do that, suddenly the volume is up. Other people start getting in as well. It's the old story. Nobody wants to be the first girl on the dance floor. You want to be the second, the third, the fifth, the tenth. If there's 2,500 people on the dance floor, let's go. But if there's nobody, am I going to be the one that starts that role, or am I going to be sitting there uh, with my pants around my ankles for some time? Now, other companies that we know about are, are Ampt, uh, AMPD, a high-performance computing company that's involved in uh, virtual film production, uh, video effects, video render. Uh, they're in AI. Uh, they're a really interesting company, Volumetric Capture Studios, that will fuel VR and AR going forward. Uh, they're already making money in all these elements. They're doing business, but they can't always talk about their contracts because they're commercial and confident. So... They can say, hey, we got a new contract for six figures, but they can't tell you who and for how much. This is problematic when it comes to generating excitement on the market. So Amt has this situation where every time it jumps up a cent, there are people going, oh, great, that's my opportunity to get out, rather than, oh, it's gone up a cent, or maybe I'll buy more. So traders hate it. Investors who are there for the long haul and in no rush to get out this is a good opportunity. You can take as much stock as you want. You're not going to blow things up. Uh, we know of uh, a few other companies that we look at on the regular and that we've said we really like, but for whatever reason, the market isn't being kind to them. One of those is Coho Commissary. Uh, these guys do ghost kitchens all over BC. A ghost kitchen is you set up commissary kitchen that several different brands can operate from at all times at a much reduced cost than having your own kitchen for every restaurant and delivery service. It's just, it makes economic sense. They're doing well, but the story's not being told because they're not telling it. They're not out there blathering it to the marketplace. And every time someone sells a piece of this thing because they've got to buy Timmy a bike, 
the stock drops by two or three cents. Once they get the story out enough and people start buying in and holding the stock, once there's a market in place and volume and they're not having like 12K shares traded on a given day, but rather 120K, now this thing starts to actually be volatile and more people will be encouraged to buy into it and it will go up as a result. Not happening right now. Now, it may happen in the future. Um, we certainly know of one company, uh, Happy Belly Food Group. Uh, we talked to them about doing a marketing deal with us. They decided not to do it because they don't want to spend money on marketing with anybody. Okay, your call. Uh, and you know they know that's a risk. Their thing is, we believe people will discover us organically, hear about our story, believe in us, and eventually the share price will go up. Well, for most of the last year, that hasn't been the case. But in the last week or so, They've managed to catch a bit of a wave. People are buying in. And now the thing has jumped from 10.5 cents to 16.5 cents in like a week. Now, this is why the companies that don't trade are interesting to me because you're just a small amount of buying away from getting over that lip into the next level where the stock can appreciate on an ongoing basis. The untraded or thinly traded stocks, they're for the true believers. So you really got to look at it and say, I think this company is going to go somewhere. If you find one of these just before they start marketing themselves, it's a gold mine, right? Because the marketing quite often is the missing piece. Uh, Pluralock is a company that we've been talking about for some time, uh, but only really been really giving the gears to in the last month. Pluralock is a, an infosec company, a computer security company that involves itself very much in AI processes. Now telling people about Pluralock has been hard for the last couple of months because there just wasn't a market for it. There wasn't any reason for the people to get on that day instead of in a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months. But their AI involvement has moved them into the next phase. Over the last, let's say, 10 days of us talking about Pluralock, and we have a lot, they've gone from an average day of about 60K shares traded to an average day closer to about 500,000 shares traded. That gives people confidence that if they get into the stock, they're going to be able to reasonably get out of the stock. And that's the problem with shares that aren't traded very often. If you're buying for 29 and a half, but you can only sell for 21, eh, there's a much bigger risk involved in taking a position. You want to be certain that the company you're getting into is thinly traded because no one knows about it, not thinly traded because it sucks. A thinly traded stock that nobody knows about, that will move into a place where either great results, great news, or marketing, or all of the above, plays into the into factor. That is a good place to be. So we like Beacon because they're starting to tell this story, and we because we believe the next financials will be impressive. We like Pluralock because their financials have been impressive for two years. Their exposure to AI is strong, and it continues to be strong. And this company has a track record of hitting its marks. It just hasn't been able to share that with a wide audience until this past month. Thank you, Equity Guru. Uh, Amped has been one of those companies that has get continual good news, has been building itself up slowly, but hasn't got the love from the market because the market doesn't understand high performance computing, volumetric capture studio, it's too technology. It really needs the market to sort of understand the stock a little bit more. And quite frankly, for a couple of the people that have sizable amounts of it, to stop fucking selling out from under it. Give it a chance to breathe. Give it a chance when it gets a good news story out to get another good news story out in the following week without people taking a one cent profit. For goodness sake, let a company grow. There are all sorts of companies out there that you'll find that are in this realm. And for mine, uh, the most interesting companies out there. If you want to get on a stock that is cratering, that you hope is going to turn it around, the dead cat bounce strategy, that's a valid strategy, but it has a lot of risk. The risk on an unloved stock that just hasn't managed to get its story out yet is that it may not get its story out. It may never get the story out. It may at some point need to raise money and not want to do so at a low price. What you want is a company that has raised money already, Beacon, Amped, Pluralock, uh, is, has a good solid business plan that you think is going to only get better over time, all three of those hasn't got the story out to a point where people have seen it and rejected it, but rather hasn't got the story out yet. Uh, and companies that, quite frankly, that you look at in depth and say, I like the way these guys do business. 
the big gap, that gap to step up from thinly traded to traded significantly, that is a hard gap. Not every company will make it, but the value in being somebody who looks for opportunities below that gap is when they do make that step up, your stocks go from 10 cents, not just to 20, but to 40 to 60. Once the general public sees it and sees that it's in the midst of a real move up, that's a real time you want to have already be in the stock, not a time you want to be chasing. Uh, if you think you're paying a premium right now because there's not a lot of volatility, wait till you see the premium you pay when a couple of uh, companies start putting out good news. Uh, so for us, PLUR, Happy Belly, HBFG, I think, uh, is already leaving the station. Uh, we like Coho, but goodness sake, guys, like tell your story, get it out there. Um, and uh, what else did we say here? Oh, Beacon, Beacon Wizardry and Magic. Get it on your watch list, take a little position, just a little position, and watch them like a hawk. Like, believe that you will see positive things, and the position you take today would be a very happy one in six months, nine months, 12 months' time.